Today I am going to be reviewing the book Japanese Yokai and Other Supernatural Beings, Authentic Paintings and Prints of 100 Ghosts, Demons, Monsters, and Magicians by Andreas Marx. I actually have read another book by the author before. It is this Japan Journeys. This is what the cover looks like and I have the review of that on my channel. So if that sounds interesting to you then feel free to go search that review as well. The reason I got this book out is because I was trying to fill some gaps in my knowledge. So because I come, I live in the United States and I come from a Western background, I guess you can say, I'm very familiar with these myths that come from, I guess, broadly speaking, the culture I come from. So I'm familiar with the Greek myths. I've read a lot of the ancient Greek and Roman literature. I'm familiar with the Middle Ages, the ones that we're associated with. So I have all this cultural background, which sometimes gets used in or influences modern fiction or fantasy. And so I have that knowledge of the background or the, the stories behind what I'm reading, the, the mythology behind what I'm reading to kind of fully appreciate other works of art that come from or other writings from other Western authors. But when it comes to cultures that I'm less familiar with, one of them would of course be Japan. I don't live in Japan. I don't have any relatives from Japan. I'm not familiar, very familiar with Japanese culture. I don't speak the language. So when it comes to consuming media that comes from Japan, which is of course has become very popular in the United States, there's a lot of background context that I feel like sometimes is missing or things that are referenced common monsters, common stories that are referenced or used or taken inspiration from that we lack the context for because we don't have that background. And I wanted to kind of fill that gap, so I've been doing some reading. Plus this involves a lot of, as mentioned here, prints. And I really enjoy that Japanese woodblock print style of art. I've read a lot of books or a couple books on that topic and the reviews of those are also on my channel. So I really enjoy that style of art as well. And I kind of wanted to put them together and this seemed like the perfect book to give me more background on this Japanese mythology and the stories and fantasies and supernatural beings that are in that mythology to give me a broader view of that while also having these woodblock prints that I can look at and enjoy because they're just cool to look at. So I got this book out and it was very, very enjoyable. Normally I utilize my public library and I love it. I like being able to get things from the public library, read it and return it. I'm living in a rental right now and moving books is my least favorite activity, but I want to get a copy of this book. I'm happy to move this up and down as many stairs as needed because I would love to have this book to reference, to own, to flip through. It's not really a plot style book. It's not like there's a narrative from beginning to end with chapters, although there is a breakdown I'll get to. It's more like there are entries. And on each page or in each couple pages, they talk about a particular supernatural being, ghosts, demons, monsters, magicians, etc., and some background, some key stories, some information, as well as some prints. So it was almost more of a reference book and it's something that I would love to have on hand. So despite the fact that I read this cover to cover, it's something that's designed to be used again and again as reference, I kind of feel. And therefore I want to get a copy of my own to own. And I think if you read this book, you might also find that you want a copy of your own to reference back to if necessary. So I read this as mentioned cover to cover and it is broken up into a variety of sections. Here's the table of contents. The monsters, supernatural beings, whatever you would like to call them, are grouped together. So we have the yokai, which are the demons, the yurei, which are the ghosts and apparitions. Then we have kabuki ghosts, magicians, ogres, and vengeful spirits. And this is not designed to be an overview of every supernatural being that is found in Japanese mythology, but it is designed to kind of be an overview of some of the key and important ones, which is why I thought it was useful for my purposes. Of course, if we're going to read something that talks about Greek mythology, a book like this won't contain every character on Greek mythology, but just kind of the high points to give you the information you need. And I feel like that is what this book is attempting to do. And that's what it did very well. I really enjoyed how much information was provided for each supernatural being. It was the perfect amount. I never felt like I was overwhelmed during the weeds. Everything was clearly explained. And the variety of prints chosen were really well selected as well. We have a variety of prints from a variety of artists. And something that I feel like the more you look at these prints, the more you realize is that each artist, of course, you might as well assume this, but they have their unique style. And as you start to look at these prints, you can really start to determine the unique styles and the ones that you prefer and the ones that you like better. So I really enjoyed the fact that the 
author of this book took time to select a variety of prints because then you can also see the variety of ways these supernatural beings were conceived or drawn. For example, here's one of a bat and as you can see from all of it's the Nobusuma or wild blanket that kind of looks like a bat to me but if you look at the prints you can see it looks different in each print that it's printed in. So seeing the different ways that artists conceptualize each one of these monsters also gives you a wider variety, I think, than if just one print was selected to represent that uh, supernatural being. I think overall, again, very, very enjoyable. I think, again, it's something that I want to own. I'm obviously going to return this to the library because it is the library's copy of the book, but I think it's something that I'm going to try to purchase for myself because I, it's something I'm going to reference and I'm going to want to reference again. That, in my opinion, is kind of the point of a book like this. It's not something I just want to read once and then return. The context is really important so if I were to ever read something or consume something or just had a question on something that comes from Japanese mythology I have a handy reference that I can reference back to plus it's an aesthetically pleasing book I like the way it's set up I like the prints that are selected I really really enjoy just the book overall I remember from the Japan Journeys which is the other book I read by Andreas Marx I really enjoyed that book as well so it goes to show that I like his selections or the ways that he lays these books out. I wanted to show a couple that I thought were really interesting or really just one page that I thought was quite interesting. And if you have a copy of this book, it's page 138 and 139. This is in the ghosts and apparitions section. And I think that what I find most interesting is how some of these to me still convey a little bit of spookiness. And I really enjoyed the wide variety and the yeah, a little bit of spookiness that can be conveyed in each one of these ghosts. So here's a, there are a wide variety of prints, paintings from scrolls from a wide variety of times and artists. So it kind of shows the wide variety. And I like this one over here on the left, which is the one that's also on the cover the most, I think. Again, there's probably a glare from the light. But if you have a copy of this book, you can get it yourself on page 138 and 139. I really liked just looking at the prints and I feel like you could take as much time in the world looking at each one of these woodblock prints. It's something that I find overall with most art, we don't spend enough time looking at it. So I really, again, want to get a copy, but I also highly recommend if you're looking for something to increase your knowledge on Japanese mythology and supernatural beings, if you are looking to have something on hand to reference whenever you run into these, or if you just want to enjoy looking at really good art, then this would definitely be a book I can recommend. Japanese yokai and other supernatural beings, authentic paintings and prints of a hundred ghosts, demons, monsters, and magicians. This is an excellent book I highly recommend. And I've since this is my second book I've read by him, I can honestly say I really recommend this Andreas Marx as an author. I like two of his works so far, highly recommend. So I'm probably going to see if I can get my hands on these other ones that he has because I've been enjoying them so much and I want to see what else he's put out. If you've read this book, if you've read anything like this book, if you have any thoughts, opinions, things to recommend, please put it in the comments below. I love to read them and receive them. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great rest of your day.